Like any pawnbrokers, Rick, Corey, and Chumley have the difficult task of haggling with sellers in their famous gold and silver pawn shop. One thing is sure, they can't guarantee that everyone who walks through the shop will have a good time. While Rick Harrison and his family will occasionally make a deal worth all of $10 at least once per episode, they inevitably hit the five-figure mark or more. From incredible centuries-old artifacts to gorgeous guitars and infamous cars, the Pawn Stars have seen it all. There have been times though that the Pawn Stars have made questionable deals that ended up being big potential losses for the sellers. Obviously, the value of these items is completely subjective and dependent on lots of factors like the rarity and condition, as well as how desperate the seller is for quick cash. With that said, let's take a look at 10 scam deals the Pawn Stars took advantage of. Brock Williams is a former New England Patriots defensive back, so when he appeared at the world famous gold and silver pawn shop, Rick knew he was carrying something great and valuable. Though Rick's favorite thing to buy are certainly cars and guitars, when it comes to sports memorabilia, there are just everyone's cup of tea. And when it comes to football, there's no greater piece of history than a Super Bowl winner's ring, an honor even some of the best players in history never got to hold. Sadly, some players that somehow won them without ever playing a single second for the victorious team don't really value them. The rookie had been plagued with injuries that forced early retirement, so he decided to pawn his 2001 Patriots Super Bowl ring for a modest $2,600. For whatever reason, he never came back for it, making it Rick's possession after the requisite 120 days. Because it's now his to sell, the price tag has rocketed up to $100,000. Though the next purchase was an impulse buy from Corey and it also didn't happen at the gold and silver pawn shop, in the end it turned out to be a great buy. The demon muscle car was put in a raffle at the Golden Gate and D Casino Hotel in Las Vegas, which Corey attended. However, Corey missed out on his chance to win the fastest production car ever built with 707 horsepower and a 2.3 second 0 to 60 mile per hour sprint time. So he did the next best thing and offered the winner a ton of cash for the whip. So he ended up getting it for $80,000. It was a great event, especially for the crowd who felt like they watched an episode of Pawn Stars right in front of them. But even better was the fact that the car is easily worth about $150,000 to $180,000. So Corey's impulse decision turned out to be a great one. Initially owned by rock legend Stephen Stills, who was playing it in the folk rock group Crosby, Stills & Nash, the magnificent 1941 Gibson SJ200 guitar somehow got to the gold and silver pawn shop with a bill of sale signed by Stephen himself. Since guitar collectors and music lovers especially prize Gibsons for their clear tone and fine construction, a 1941 Gibson guitar can fetch a high price. However, this guitar is extra valuable because of who originally owned it, so when a customer walked into the shop with a guitar owned by the man who wrote For What It's Worth, the Harrisons were immediately interested. On its own, this guitar would be worth $75,000, but an expert said that because it had belonged to Stephen Stills, its worth was $105,000. Rick offered the seller $85,000, and luckily for him, the seller agreed on selling the guitar for a much lower price than it could be sold elsewhere. I've got to have 90. Okay. Change your mind, call me. <sighs> 85, man. All right. Like every other pawn shop, the gold and silver pawn shop isn't immune to stolen property despite their efforts to abide by the law. A few years ago, a woman named Jennifer Beckman came to the shop with a collection of valuable gold coins. However, according to a criminal complaint filed by the state of Nevada, Beckman had stayed at her uncle's house for one day in November 2013, and while there, she stole the coins and took them to the gold and silver pawn shop, where she got $12,375 for the collection her uncle valued at up to 50000 The moment the theft was reported, Detective Watkins contacted the shop and attempted to place a hold on the coins so they could be returned to the Walters. But it turned out the coins were gone. While Nevada law regulates that pawn shops must hold items for 30 to 90 days in case the police need to identify stolen items or the owners would change their minds, it turns out coins are not included under items that must be held and the shop's owners can do with them whatever they want. Well, the crew decided to melt the coins down and though the shop's spokesperson Laura Harlovich stated they weren't worth what Walters thought they were, the Harrisons made a good profit from this buy. 
Isaac Newton is one of history's most important figures, not to mention one of science's most integral godfathers too. Famous for many things, anything that was directly touched by this famous person is practically priceless. So when a seller Bob walked into the shop with a copy of a 450 year old book on alchemy that he believes is from Isaac Newton's library, he expected to have a good deal. Of course, the old man decided to call in rare book expert Gary, who informed everyone that it was indeed a book from Newton's collection. Collection, although the cover had been restored and rebacked. Nevertheless, Gary places the retail value of the book at $20,000. In typical fashion, the old man gave the seller an absurdly low price, and shockingly, Bob accepted the offer. When a seller came to the shop with an exquisite samurai sword, he was hoping to trade it for a nice prize since he knew swords and weapons are a major fixture in every pawn shop. However, he ran into Cory, who slashed through negotiations on a 15th century samurai sword that could potentially net the shop over $10,000. The seller was a lawyer who wanted to sell a sword that he'd got as a collateral from a client that didn't come back to claim it, so he decided to sell it with no idea whatsoever of how much it was worth. But Cory made him a ridiculous low opening offer at $800. I'm seeing like 800 bucks. That's not even $100 a century on this thing. It's worth every bit of $5,000. Even though during the backroom confessional before the negotiation with the seller took place, he said that he had seen a few of those swords going for thousands of dollars. But I've seen a few of these sell for thousands of dollars. If this one's legit, it might be just the thing to show him I'm capable of handling risk in a bigger way around here. After some negotiating, they struck a deal at $1,500, which was obviously a steal, but the unprepared lawyer was extremely happy. Well, we're not sure if he was still feeling that way when he later watched the show and found out the sword's value was five to $6,000 in its current condition, but it could be sold for a whopping $15,000 if Corey would pay a $3,000 restoration. Corey has had several gambles and risky purchases from the very beginning. In a very early episode of Pawn Stars, he took a huge gamble buying a 1984 Chris Craft boat without consulting anyone. Besides, there was a strict rule made by his father Rick to never buy a boat as it's incredibly large in storage and it often costs far more to fix than it's worth. So when Corey paid the owner of the boat a total of $16,500 for it, Rick was furious. When he saw him on the store's camera talking with someone in front of a boat, he was mad, and when he found out that Corey spent more than he was normally allowed to, since he had no experience whatsoever, Rick got even madder. It is my f money. No, we're gonna make plenty of f money, dude. No, seriously, Dad, what do you want me to f do? Of course. No, it's yours and the old man's. It's the f stores that you tell me to spend. However, luckily for Corey, it turned out the restoration for the boat only cost $4,000, which made it pretty valuable. That was one of Corey's first big purchases, even though it was a lucky guess. In season 4, Rick decided to buy an eponymous 1890s Colt 45 revolver, especially when the seller Brian revealed he purchased it for 25 bucks. How much did you pay for it? I gave 25 bucks for it. Give me 26 right now. <laughs> oh, no, 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 no. Though they eventually agreed on a price of $3,000, weapons expert Sean told Rick that the gun was worth at least 5,000 in its current condition. At least five. Nice. He did well. Everything I'm seeing here, it's right. Okay. And it's fantastic. Not only that, but it also turned out that depending on exactly how rare the specific model was, it could even be worth much more. For instance, the first ever Colt 45 Peacemaker, originally manufactured in 1873, was sold at auction in 1987 for a whopping $242,000, according to the New York Times. Though the gun featured on Pawn Stars was for much later, the current pricing on similar era Colt 45s ranges from around $2,000 all the way up to 42,000. H.R. Geiger was one of the most interesting figures in the entertainment industry, with his works often showing macabre scenes of humans and machines fused into hellish hybrids that inspired a whole generation of film directors. This is why his artwork is extremely famous, and Corey was surprised when a man brought in his art book to the shop. The book was signed and full of several graph designs for the aliens in the Alien films. Corey decided to call his signature expert to verify whether the signature was real, and it soon turned out 
doubt it was completely authentic. However, the signature was the only thing that made that book valuable, so he estimated its worth at $1,200. After some negotiation, Corey managed to talk down the price to $500, and the owner ended up accepting it. 500 bucks. Yeah, sure. All right, cool. I'll meet you right over there and right Jeff, right? Since that was a really rare and interesting item, the price was surely low, and hopefully the shop has managed to make some nice profit off of it. Everyone is familiar with the iconic moment when Marilyn Monroe sang Happy Birthday Mr. President to President John F. Kennedy dressed pretty provocatively during his birthday bash. It turns out there was even a painting showing that same moment painted by Leroy Neiman and in season 14 it appeared on the show when a guy came in looking to sell it and hoping to get $6,000 for it. As expected, the price was too high for Corey so he decided to call in his expert Chad to appraise it. After seeing the painting, Chad stated that the high retail price for the painting could probably be $7,500, while a more realistic retail price was probably around $6,000. When Corey heard all of this, he made an offer of only $2,500, claiming it would cost him a lot to have it framed and sold. In a really fancy gallery, I don't see getting that much. I think I might be able to get six, but that's after I frame it, pay someone to sell it, everything else and he managed to eventually strike a deal at $3,000, leaving the guy with only half of what the painting was actually worth. 